Hi, I hope you guys are keeping well. Uh, so, we just continue um, with our, whatever we um, left yesterday. Um, give me one sec. Okay, now. So we will continue from page number 66. Peggy who had thought this is a conversation about, uh, uh, about uh, an immigrant girl called uh, Wanda Petrunsky if you remember I just reiterate and how she is struggling to, uh, to survive and, and get adjusted in a new city, in a new town, in a new country and how the students and the classmates of her class are not uh, ready to accept her as, as one of them. So Peggy, who had thought of this game, and Maddie, her inseparable friend, were always the last to leave. So now the story has come to a point where Wanda has not been coming to school for, for the past three days. And for the first two days, children did not notice uh, uh, because, um, you know, she did not have had any friends. She was sitting, she also sit, always used to sit at the back of the, of the bench. And... Um, but on the third day, on Wednesday, there were two girls, Pe Pe Betty and um, Peggy and, and Maddie. And uh, uh, so they were quite popular and these girls were quite popular in the, in the school, in the class. And they used to make fun and tease Wanda. So in order to just have some more fun, they waited for Wanda before the school hours. And that's how they end up, ended up getting late. And that is how everybody, you know, they realized that Wanda has not been coming to school. So, finally, Wanda would move up the street, her eyes dull and her mouth closed, hitching her left shoulder every now and then in the funny way she had, finishing the walk to school again. So, this is uh, telling about how Peggy and uh, Wanda had, uh, you know, um, always used to make fun of, uh, of, Wanda, of uh, Wanda Petrovsky. Finally, Wanda would move up the street and because she did not say anything, she was she never, uh, you know, defended herself. So she would just would start walking alone. Peggy was not really cruel. You know, she, she not, did not have a very bad heart. She protected small children from bullies. She was not very, very bad because she always used to um, help uh, little children uh, from, from, uh, from elder children. And she cried for hours if she saw an animal mistreated. She was very sensi sensitive towards animal. If anybody had said to her, don't you think that is a cruel way to treat Wanda? She would have been surprised. Cruel? Why did the girl say she had a hundred dresses? So, uh, you know, the reason why they used to tease uh, Wanda Petrovsky all the time is because she always kept on saying that she had hundred dresses in her closet and she had so many pairs of shoes. Um, but the reality is that she always used to come in one uh, sky blue um, faded dress and she her shoes used to be all uh, um, full with mud and, and smeared with mud and very dirty. So uh, Peggy is trying to justify why she teases because she thinks that Wanda is lying as in because she does not understand and realize that if she had so many dresses, then why is she wearing such a, such a dirty dress every single day? So, and, um, and she wasn't just an ordinary person else. Why did she have a name like that? Anyway, they never made her cry, you know. And she said, why does she have a funny name? Why doesn't she have a common uh, name, a similar name to like, like other children in the class? As for Maddie, this business of asking Wanda every day how many dresses and how many hats and how many this and that she was bothering uh, she had was bothering her so Maddie had a different uh, you know uh, uh, mindset and she did not like that her best friend was teasing Wanda Petrovsky every single day about her belongings Maddie was poor herself Maddie came from a very um, weak uh, background and you know as far as uh, money is concerned she was not as rich as uh, Peggy she usually wore somebody's hand-me-down clothes. You know, hand-me-down is when you are using um, 
someone else's worn used clothes you're not wearing brand uh, uh, new clothes you know it's like almost like you know you you are buying second hand clothes or someone someone must have given those those clothes to her because they no longer need it thank god she did not live up on bogin heights or have a funny name but uh, she was she had a better life than vonda uh, petrovsky because she did not live in a slum or no the neither she did she have a very different name from the rest of the class uh, uh, mates sometimes when peggy was asking vonda those questions in that mocking polite voice you know mocking means uh when you are trying to purposely make fun of someone tease someone and mary felt embarrassed and studied the marbles in the palm of her hand she felt very insulted because she also was not very rich so she used to divert her mind uh, by looking at the marbles in her hand you know by 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 doing something else rolling them around and saying nothing herself not that she felt sorry for wanda exactly she she was not someone who 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 felt pity for for wanda she would never have paid any attention to wanda if peggy had not invented the dresses game so she said she would not have been interested in wanda but because peggy asked these questions and wanda replied that she has 100 dresses that is where all the game started but suppose peggy and all the others started in on her next she wasn't as poor as wanda perhaps but she was poor so so uh, it's just that madi was poor even though if she was not as poor as wanda but she was poor of course she would have made sense made sense then to say she had 100 dresses still she would not like for them to begin on her she wished peggy would stop teasing wanda so peggy was teasing and 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 maggie could never uh, tell her best friend to to stop that uh, blame game you know and stop uh, teasing um, uh, uh stop teasing um wanda petrovsky all the time she 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 could not do that today even though they had been late to school and because they were late uh, to school why because they were waiting for wanda petrovsky uh, to please her maddy was glad she had not had to make fun of wanda maddy was happy that uh, wanda was not there to be to you know to be mocked she worked her arithmetic problems absentmindedly eight times eight let's see she wished she had the nerve to write peggy a note because she knew she never would have the courage to speak or write out to peggy to say hey peg let's stop asking wanda how many dresses she has peggy was her best friend you know but she could never ever bear up the you know just pull up the courage to tell her best friend to stop teasing wanda you know so she thought maybe i'll write a letter and and give it to her so when she had finished her arithmetic she did start a note to peggy suddenly she paused and shuddered but suddenly she stopped when she was trying to write a letter she pictured herself in the school yard a new target for peggy so she thought if i start if i write a letter to peggy saying to stop teasing wanda maybe they'll stop teasing wanda but then maybe they'll start te- teasing her peggy peggy might ask her where she got the dress that she had on and maddy would say have to say it was one of peggy's old ones that maddy's mother had tried to disguise with new trimmings so no one in room 13 would recognize it so she always had this you know inferior complex a fear that if i stop uh, if i tell uh, peggy to to stop um, teasing wanda petrovsky maybe she'll disclose a secret that she's wearing my hand me down clothes she's wearing my old used clothes and how um, uh, maddie's mother must have put some some lace or or some extra design on the dress so that it doesn't look like the same because these dresses were once worn by peggy to school if only peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with wanda so she thought was so peggy thought that even if i'm not part of this uh, teasing game that's okay because i think i should stop teasing wanda although she knew that she could not stop uh, uh, maddy maddy sorry she could not stop uh, uh, peggy maddy ran her hand through her short blonde hair 
as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. So she's, you know, there, there are a lot of things going in a, in a small child's mind and, uh, you know, she's trying to convince herself and trying to, you know, uh, um, persuade her, uh, uh, her best friend not to tease um, Water Petrovsky. Slowly, Marb, uh, what difference did it make? Slowly, Maddie tore into bits the note she has started. She said, why should I write a note to, to Peggy? You know, I think I'm doing a very, ba very bad mistake. And she stopped. She, she started tearing the, cutting the, the paper. She was Peggy's best friend. And Peggy was the best liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. She said, Peggy could not do anything wrong. She's so good. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggan Heights and stood alone in the schoolyard. She was just a poor immigrant who used to live in a slum and uh, stand in the uh, schoolyard where everyone used to come and, and tease her. She scarcely ever said anything to anyone. She hardly said anything to anyone. You know, she was very quiet. The only time she talked was the was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. And when children used to, particularly, especially Peggy, when she used to ask her about her closet, about her cupboard, she used to say that she had hundred dresses. Maybe she, uh, her parents were rich in Poland and they became poor when they migrated to, emigrated to, to, to um, United States of America. We do not know the reasons why uh, she, uh, her family had moved from Poland to America. Maybe um, they were forced to uh, leave their country. So these are the things. Uh, I think I've just lost. Slowly, Maddie tore into bits the note she had started. She was Peggy's best friend, and Peggy was the best liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything wrong. She really uh, that was really wrong, you know. So, uh, Peggy was almost like a picture perfect girl who always was correct, and because she was one of the most popular girls in the school and in the class. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggan Heights and stood alone in the school. Yeah, no one bothered because she used to come from a slum. She was an immigrant, you know, very poor. She, and she was to come from Boggan Heights. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. She always used to talk about only one thing and that was and that also when people, when children used to ask about a hundred dresses in her closet. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue with colored trimmings. And she remembered another that was brilliant jungle green with a red sash. You know, sash is a ribbon sort of thing which goes across your shoulder. You would lie, look like a Christmas tree in that, the girls had said in pretended admiration. And she used to explain all those, uh, all those uh, dresses, you know. That I had a sky blue dress, I had a green dress, and everybody used to get surprised and they used to tease that they, she would look like a Christmas tree. Thinking about Wanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Maddie began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and coloring contest. And she used to think that who is going to win the, the, the competition. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses, and for boys, of designing motorboats, probably more motorboats. So there was a drawing competition where girls used to design, uh, you know, sober things. Um, and uh, boys used to design their uh, uh, picture there, design motorboats and bikes and all that. So Peggy would always uh, win the girls' medal. Peggy drew better than anyone in that. She was very good in drawing. At least that's what everybody thought. She would copy a picture in a magazine or some film star, he, <coughs> star's head, so that you could almost tell who it was. She was very good in drawing. She could make a, make a drawing and, and tell you to guess who that person was. Maddie was sure Peggy would win. 
Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners. Then they would know. She said, don't worry. Tomorrow we'll come to know. And as usual, Peggy will always win the, the competition. The next day it was drizzling. It was uh, raining uh, slightly. Maddie and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. And they were coming to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they did not wait for Wanda Petrosky. They were not waiting for Wanda on the, on the street, on Oliver Street. Because it was raining, the weather was bad. The street that far, far away under the railroad tracks and up the hill led to Boggin Heights. You know? And um, anyway, they weren't taking chance on being late today because today was important. Why it was important? Because uh, the, the, the drawing competition results would be announced. Do you think Miss Mason would announce the winners today? Asked Peggy. So Peggy and Maddie, they're discussing if the class teacher, uh, Miss Mason, will she announce the, the winners? Oh, I hope so. The minute we get in, said Maddie, of course, you will win. So this is uh, till here. I will um, uh, stop it. Then tomorrow, once we finish the chapter, we'll um, discuss the question answers. On your, uh, in your... Um, We'll go to the assignments.